I got into the office, I set up the game, I told them the, the rules, and then I was called, called into by the other team. I think we were preparing the Tricarian Collector's Edition, and I had to look some expansion icons. And mm -hmm. I was like, you guys, all of my ideas are already on the table. Do something with it, and then tell me what you got. I went away for an hour and a half. They came. I came back, and the, the, the four of them were like, yeah, we tossed out all of those fans things and <laughs> there are watchtowers and now you can build outposts and also you have this player board with the play, player power. So I was like, whoa. Welcome to Cardboard Creations, where we discuss the process, techniques, and inspiration for designing board games. I'm your host, Candace Harris, and I'm super excited to be here today with Victor Peter, Richard Amon, David Turtsey, and Thomas van der Hunst to find out how Perseverance Castaway Chronicles was created. But first, let's jump into a brief overview of what Perseverance Castaway Chronicles is all about. Perseverance Castaway Chronicles is a multi-episode series of dice drafting and dice placement strategy games for one to four players, which tells the story of a group of survivors becoming a mighty civilization on a hostile island with dinosaurs. In episode one, players strive to develop and protect the foothold town of Perseverance, besieged by the dinosaurs of the island. By building walls, traps and settlements, mounting defenses, and influencing the early political power struggles of a forming community, players gain followers to establish themselves as leaders. In episode two, the survivors have successfully defended the city of Perseverance, completing a massive wall to stop the dinosaur onslaught. Under the guidance of the ship's senior officers, players set out to explore the surrounding wilderness, expand the settlement beyond the walls, and chart a path to the mysterious structure on the horizon. Episode two adds new actions to expand the core dice placement and area majority mechanisms introduced in episode one, in addition to giving players the ability to customize their leaders and factions with a variety of unique skills. The theme, story, and game mechanisms will continue to evolve with episodes three and four, which will complete the Perseverance Castaway Chronicles saga. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Hey. Hello. Uh, <laughs> hello. It is very nice to have you here today. This is uh, the biggest interview I've ever done with four designers at once. Uh, very exciting. <laughs> I feel like you guys and the rest of the design team at Mind Clash Games has like truly mastered the art of creating heavy thematic board games. I mean, just every everything you do, it just like the theme and the mechanisms are so well integrated. And then you always have these very unique themes. Then with Perseverance, oh man, Perseverance is like just so ambitious and massive in its scope. And it's like, you're kind of transforming what you already do, but into this epic, multi-episode experience. So I gotta know, how did this get started? Like <laughs> what, what, what made you originally, like what inspired Perseverance Castaway Chronicles? Um, yeah, so in, in many ways, this is indeed like our magnum opus right now, <laughs> the, the very <laughs> pinnacle of what, what we would like to get out of the, of the thematic heavy euro genre. But it actually didn't start that way. Uh, uh, it, it started with a pitch from David, essentially. So I, I'll just pass it on to him and, and I'll, I'll pick up where he left off. <laughs> and my cool. story started with a pitch from Thomas. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it turtles all the way down. But uh, I think it was 2015 Essen we agreed to, uh, the, to the timeline. Right, Thomas? I think it was that. Yes. So, so Thomas show, uh, Thomas and Lo showed me a prototype. Uh, I think it was about art dealing. Help, help me out here. What 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 was the game about? I only remember the core mechanism. Yeah, well, well, the funny part is, it's like uh, Perseverance is a huge game, and the one I pitched was like the smallest game ever. It was like <laughs> one, one sheet one sheet of paper for each player, 
and like eight dice. And it was some kind of an art auctioning game where you could uh, swap your dice into your color. So it was uh, your art and then you could sell it or whatever. It was a really and, short all game. And, and I was like, yeah, 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 I understand. But who are these dice? Why are they being, they, they are not the pictures we're buying. So why are they, why are we converting these dice to our color? It, it, and, and, and then at the end of the round, we score based on who has more dice in on this or that side. Of, it's like, this feels like I'm convincing people to vote for me. This, this should be a game about democracy. Mm. And then we were like, all right, let's find a theme. What not to do? Let's not do modern politics because people will disagree. Let's not do Greeks and Romans because they've all been done. So there we were in the ancient time of 2015. So let's pick a brand new theme that nobody has ever done before. Viking democracy. Ah. <laughs> wow. So, so uh, you know, thematic euro even when doing it small so we made a prototype called Thingvellir which is named after the Icelandic parliament in continuous use since the ninth century and it had Thomas's mechanism of converting the dice to your color and then those dice being were placed on the board and mm. I pitched this game to uh, Victor and Richard at uh, 2016 Essen or just before Essen or something like that and then that Essen Feast for Odin, in the name of Odin, Jorvik, and the fourth uh, Viking theme game that since then I long forgotten came out. And, <laughs> and their reaction was like, a week later, it's like, yeah, but not the theme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so, so we, were like, we were like, okay, the theme has to go, but uh, the, the demo democracy and voting aspect and converting people to your sort of cause was, was really something that, that stick with us. So uh, we decided to sort of dream up a world where, where, when this is happening or where this is happening, where this could be happening. And we, we've been brainstorming a lot. We went through all those ideas again that David already discarded because, <laughs> because of being overused or problematic otherwise. And we ended up at, uh, well, basically a, a newly formed society on, on an island because, uh, because they had essentially no choice because they are stranded on that island mm. uh, so that, that 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 gave us the idea so, so sort of like a like an upstart fledgling little society that's growing and evolving into something bigger and cool. implements democracy from the get-go and uses this assembly system that we had uh, from plus the, the vikings bird. had a boat raiding like filling the boats to go for raiding mechanism so putting it near water made sense that mechanism has long disappeared from the game so <laughs> oh wow oh, wow yeah. very very cool so how did you get from kind of um thomas's right um like initial prototype into now we're transforming it into our new theme um, to create the prototype for pers perseverance. And also, you know, it's, this is kind of a unique topic because, or game to cover because it's multiple episodes. So I'm also just curious, like, did you start working on episode one first, or did you kind of flesh out all of that like the what you wanted to do for all of them like tell me about that please <laughs> sure so we we are only at like halfway through our timeline and uh, <laughs> so so, uh, so once we decided uh on the theme and yeah so the dinosaur uh, so the, the island survivor thing was also like kind of used because there is robinson crusoe yeah granted it's a very different game but still like mm -hmm. uh on face value, survive, the island survival game, island survival game. So, so we tried to spice it up with something, and th that something was dinosaurs, which uh, yes. since then also became quite popular. But at that time, it, it looked, <laughs> looked like a ph phenomenal yeah. thing. So, essentially, a dinosaur island where people are trying to survive and build their own society. That was the, the core idea, and that remains the core idea to this day. Um, and this theme, like, spawned billions of ideas and we just wanted to do all like we wanted it all to be <laughs> so so we kept you know uh we, we we tried to implement the raids by adding the dinosaurs we tried to have politics but also dinosaur attacks and also exploration and, and everything 
Mm-hmm. And, it, and it grew into something that was even too much for, it was too much even for us, I would say. So, yeah, gotcha. This, <laughs> and it, was, it kind of felt like that even when we start the story, it doesn't feel like the start of the story. So we couldn't, in just one game, we couldn't tell the whole thing. Because gotcha. no matter how we scaled the, the theme part of the mechanics, it really felt like that these guys have been here for a while. So, mm-hmm. so to answer your question, we haven't really been started starting to work on episode one. So think well here as it was in, in those time, back in those times, it was kind of like the basics of the episode you guys haven't seen yet. Yep. Mm, so ba- that game, that game, what we are talking about, uh, is the base of episode three actually, and we did we did not want like we did not have the episodic thing uh, in mind initially, but once we saw what we have and we wanted to keep parts of it, but we knew that we can't have all of this in one game, and like Richard said, the timeline and you know starting in the middle also fe- felt a bit weird. So we thought, okay, we could make like a tutorial version to this game. Uh, mm. which coincidentally takes place a couple of months or years even earlier than the main mm-hmm. events. So we, just after the founding of the city. Yeah, yeah. So just after the shipwreck. So we could introduce the, uh, the uh, core mechanisms such as the assembly, the die placement, die conversion, stuff like that, uh, which was cool. But there, we, we still felt that there is more because then, you know, the theme also came uh, came back and and, and uh, made us think that okay, but if we are like an, a very very at the very very beginning of this society, then probably the dinosaurs mm. are not welcoming us on their island or something. And then, then it this was at uh, at around uh, 2018 when we came up with okay, there is a lot in this thing, like a whole lot, mm-hmm. much more than even this. So we thought, okay, let's make episode one. Uh, let's make the tutorial version epi- into episode one, a proper like pre- prequel or prelude, uh, gotcha. and let's and let's keep improving on those mechanisms while keeping the core all through the series. But at the, but at the time, it was only two games: the big one and the small one. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. But but at that time, we knew that we wanted more games, and initially, it was actually five games, but <laughs> we. we <laughs> We, we did cut that down to four uh, down the line. So, so yeah, that, that's, that's how so the, the tutorial mode that we wanted to make to this super complex big game was the one that spawned this entire idea. And don't worry, oh, cool. episode three won't be this, this mind-blowingly complex thing that we just described because we, I think we did succeed in like splitting up uh, all the cool things into the, cool, into the episode separately. Which we didn't yeah, know at the time how to. We've learned in the six years in between. So <laughs> nice. And also, and also, as you mentioned, it wasn't just about watering down episode three. It was about completely new designs, and that wasn't something we realized at first. And because of this, we 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 kind of had to change our concepts, what we had in mind as we started working on episode one for episode two, and then even for episode three. So it doesn't mean like episode three was was kept the way it was mm-hmm. in fact gotcha. it kind of like we we had to redesign it yeah as well yeah, yeah the, the the thing so, about this sorry the, the thing about this this whole episodic concept is that maybe it's the name but people sometimes tend to misunderstand what this is all about and actually initially it was called generations and i think that in a way that was a bit more fitting name because things really, really change between each episode. The, the, the reason why we let go of generations is that it's not entirely one generation between episode one and two, but anyway, that doesn't really matter. What matters is that we really, really wanted to improve uh, each episode to be its own game, basically, on the same principles and on the same basis, uh, something familiar if you played the earlier episodes, but it's it's a game on its own merit, right? So it's it's something different and something and gives you a reason why you why you like it uh, even if you play the previous ones so it's not it's not merely the same system um, getting fluffs it's actually uh, mechanisms evolving into something different right complete different standalone games yes like the funny part is when we thought that we were ready with episode three we had a finished game then we like backtracked to make one and two, and then we had to remake three. So we actually, instead of making one game, we are, I think, 
at game five. So yeah. it's a really challenging yeah. process. But it was really great because we also learned a lot. And it was a great uh, experience. That's so awesome. And yeah, it seems like it would be an intense process to kind of create what you guys have done here. Um, what What is your like prototyping process like? Like, you know, you, you guys very much work as a team, as a, you know, design development team. How do you kind of split up things and create your prototypes? I, I'll take that. Well, first of all, the, the thing you have to understand is, is the years is that when we started this was uh, me opening a powerpoint and drawing text boxes and typing in the cards from an excel sheet that thomas and i mailed back and forth <laughs> and and uh, from there on moving on a few years uh, when uh, richard would send us ui studies of this is how roughly the card will look like and then the, i would use a photoshop template to make the cards to fast forward today where we have scripted in design templates uploading things to an ftp server so it's like you know like how do we prototype this thing it's we went from the enthusiastic semi-amateurs to to living and breathing this for years so you know it's it's uh, the one thing you learn, for example, is that something that we since use on every Mindclash project, and I've started using it on many other projects, is is the concept of a of a master document, where it's like every piece of information that's on any component is kept in a single Excel file somewhere on a Google Drive, where we can all edit it, and then as few steps from there to components, so that very little errors creep in, and again, automation where possible, and we used to do it prototyping and then it's like, hey guys, have you printed out the latest cards for next Wednesday's playtest? And then of course, pandemic hit. And then we were like, okay, we'll never play test ever again. Oh crap, we have to learn DTS. And we did. And now I think uh, at the beginning, they all hated me for suggesting, like I didn't know it at the beginning too. I was like, I was like <laughs> guys, I learned DTS, you can learn it too. And then <laughs> now it's like, Every Thursday morning, we're like there, still asleep, but we're already clicking in TTS. So it's, <laughs> it's yeah. And, and in the post 2020 reality, we, we we got used to everything. <laughs> yeah, and and it it actually stayed with us even with with our other projects. Like uh, TTS is just so flexible once you learn those little nooks and crannies <laughs> and and tricks to it that it's just way better and way faster to prototype with it. So that's. The, the, this FTP upload thing is something we can continue to use for our other projects as well. It's working like a charm. Cool, cool. And the, uh, the Epizodic concept also helped us uh, with prototyping because at first we didn't have a UI system. We had to invent it, right? So we just mm -hmm. had to figure out how, how the whole, the UI logic, how it works, how, what, we, what we do with the symbols, icons, how things look like. And so that's the early days when they had a P PPT version somehow uh, yeah. with random icons. And sometimes we didn't really understand what we had there. And once we had episode one uh, laid out, then working on episode two was so much easier UI-wise and, and playtesting it because we, we knew how, how we express a certain uh, think in, in, in uh, the next episode. Uh, cool. While we've been doing this, the art team was catching up with us. So it, it, with, with episode three, it was like we already started with prototypes with, with final artworks. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I mean, the new episode three, not, not, not the one we, we had back in 2018 or 2017. Gotcha. But, but when we started to work with episode three again, after we, we, we could put everything in a box for episode one and two, it, it was really, really exciting to finally not having to work with just plain paper and bunch of uh, bad UI. So yeah, it, it makes a difference for sure, especially with complex games like this. It, it really helps us uh, because sometimes we don't understand, but we, we understand the Excel file, but once it's there, mm -hmm. what, 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 what is this supposed to mean? The rule is if we can't put the icon into this much space, then the effect is too complicated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seems like a good rule. <laughs> and, and concerning playtesting, I think we, we actually did all 
different kind of versions that you can think about because um, David lives in Holland now. Uh, I live in Belgium. These guys live in uh, Hungary. So we, we were in Hungary, we were in, in Netherlands. I play with my friends, David plays with his friends. Then in Hungary, they are testing with the company. So, so I think with online versions, with it uh, meetups, with it everything, uh, every kind of play testing. Play testing. Possible. Okay. And then cool. once once our confidence we're, we're, level was high, then we would send it out to our people on Discord and say, play it and tell us how it feels. So it's it's a whole process, and you know we've we've had years to make all the mistakes and learn from all of them. So were you focused on play testing? one episode at a time or were were was it just like whatever's ready kind of um so yes we were uh, going one by one but but we did have some overarching things that we knew that we want to have in episode three and even four and we those were actually limiting us in in our design decisions and the design space but those were the good kind of limitations so something like you know a goal post that you can uh, continue to go towards and, and know that, okay, this has to be in the core, whatever's on top is up to us, but, but uh, you know, you, don't, you didn't have to start from scratch. Essentially, sure. uh, how, how the episodic concept is making things easier for the players to understand the game, it also made, us, it made it easier for us to design it because we didn't have to start from scratch any of mm, the episodes. Yeah. Well, sometimes it well, <laughs> didn't feel like that. Sometimes it kind of <laughs> like a challenge that, okay, we need to make this work, but it doesn't really fit what we have in the next episode. So what, sh and it doesn't work. So what should we do now? So <laughs> there were those challenges. And that sometimes it wasn't true that it's easier uh, with the gotcha. episode. Sometimes it really felt like, okay, it's a, it's a tough one. But eventually we always found a way and we we will. So when, when we keep My working favorite. on it, like, moments are always those Sherlock Holmesian, you know, when, when we've eliminated all the bad design solutions, so the <laughs> one that remains is, 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 has to be the perfect <laughs> one. So, and, and it's like, and, and then somebody has this great idea and it's like, it's like, no, 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 we can't try that because a year and a half ago, we already proved that that, that doesn't work. And it's like, oh, <laughs> so it's, it's this, cool. this insane experience to fall back on and, and, uh, uh, like Victor can back me up on this, but we've had entire projects run from start to completion at Mindclash since Perseverance has been on. And <laughs> like the stuff we learned on Perseverance, we put into Voidfall, and then the stuff we learned on Voidfall, we put back into Perseverance. So it's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean, one hell of a journey. At, at the end of the day, at the at the end of the day, this thing really helped us become be better designers, and th yeah. those experiences just you know spilled over to the other games. And and this was you know this this was never meant to be just another game in our pipeline. Uh, right now we are sort of on on a on a standpoint that it takes whatever it takes and however long it takes, but it, we just want to make it as cool and awesome as possible. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thomas, did you have something to add about playtesting? Um, when I kind well, of no, uh, well, actually. Uh... For me, like the, the, the most fun parts were uh, the parts where we sat together. Like, uh, yeah, and cool. I remember like three distinct moments where we sat together. It was like once uh, at David's place when he, with his parents in, uh, in Budapest. We were next to his house on the porch. And then we were playing episode three. And then we actually said, okay, great, it's finished. That, that's a great, that's a great version. And then everything <laughs> started over again. So I remember that was uh, like sitting together. And then we had a, a second meeting and that was like uh, next to a, a lake somewhere in Budapest, I think. And uh, Victor and Richard uh, organized that. And there were also other uh, designers there. I think also the one for, from Voidfall. Nigel, Nigel from Voidfall. Nigel and, was there too. Yeah. 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 Like, like a small yeah. group. And I'm, I'm like, I'm no professional designer. I'm not professional in the business. I'm a firefighter for my, my job's firefighting in Belgium. Oh, nice. And, and so. So it's just something next to it. And it's like such a great adventure to be sitting there next to a lake somewhere around Budapest with people I actually don't know except from games. <laughs> and, 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 and it's really great because we were there for some days and then like the, the greatest things happen. Like on day one, we said, oh, it's great. On day two, we say, oh, it's crap. It's really hell. It, it's nothing worth it. It's, it's going, it's not going to work. 
And then on day three, with everyone together around the table, like you try in two groups, you try this and we try that. And then suddenly something happens and it works. And it's like, you, you go home and you say, well, I had a great experience. I had, the game is better. And then of course, oh. we'll have so great. It's like a story to tell to the grandchildren later. One day oh. I was to a Budapest Lake uh, somewhere. <laughs> it's great. And then we That's also, awesome. and then we also met once in, uh, in, the, in the office in Budapest. And I think those three moments always move the project up a little quicker than the mm. online test. It's like sitting together, make some more chemistry. Sure. Uh, so it's going. It's, it's better. So I do have a cool story about the third meeting that Thomas mentioned that uh, you asked about whether we worked uh, simultaneously or, or in parallel. There was, mm -hmm. there was one point where, where episode one grew in confidence compared to episode two and we were like episode two is 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 lagging behind and and the <laughs> office team was play testing episode one and it was coming together so i was given the task to come up with something cool new stuff for episode two so <laughs> i came up with some brand new mechanism i think somebody showed me lowlands or some other things so i was like okay let's put fences around the new hexes and whatever it, it'll work oh, uh, uh -huh. i built this prototype i think i played it half a time before i had to rush off to the airport I got into the office, I set up the game, I told them the, the rules, and then I was called, called into by the other team. I think we were preparing the Tricarian Collector's Edition and I had to look some expansion icons. And mm -hmm. I was like, you guys, all of my ideas are already on the table. Do something with it and then tell me what you got. I went away for an hour and a half. They came, I came back and the, uh, the four of them were like, yeah, we tossed out all of those fans' things, and <laughs> they're now watchtowers, and now you can build outposts, and also you have this player board with the play, player powers on it. I was like, whoa. And that's like 60% of what makes App2 unique was born in the two hours, sort of despite my ideas. And then I had to spend the next month polishing that, and it was just amazing how the sparks happened so yeah but, but we needed those ideas to come up with those ideas and yeah, actually that we, we still that there is a lot of work until those ideas worked mm. and sometimes we we toss those some of those out to try something else and then we just came back to those ideas and for with a better solution so it sounds like easy because if i i think back i remember back to that date it, it really felt like we okay now we have the fundamentals of, of, of episode two and and we did but it, it's still a long journey until episode but making two, it remember. good was months after yes, yes. <laughs> you, i think a, 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 more than a year for sure yes app one stabilized cool. rather quickly but f2 took a lot of work after that still yes and that, that's, that's why you cool. can't ask us who designed what or what's <laughs> our favorite bit in the it's game collaborative because, because everything really? has been both designed and trying to be undesigned by every one of us at one point so yeah very very cool uh so so tell me about your process for writing rules uh like at what point do you start like actually documenting rules who's involved with that and yeah just what's your process like for getting the rules down well, i wrote a rule book in 2016 <laughs> <laughs> And I always say, don't ask me to write rules because it will never work. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> no, I completely back down. It's not my business. <laughs> I'm really bad at it. That, that's a specialism. Actually, we we are um, we, we have quite a few years under our belt, the, the four of us with this game. So we found out after a point that maintaining like a so-so rule book is, is more work than it's worth. So what we are doing is keeping the content master up to date. And, and it's really like a... a an Excel with a million tabs for, for each game element and everything is in there to the, to the smallest detail, oh. even like the player aid stuff, what, what's on the player. So if you are somewhat in the design, you can, you can actually learn the game from it to, to a degree. And for us, it's really easy to follow after, after all cool. these years. So that's, that's all we need. Actually, we have some nice little color coding system to, to see what changed, what implemented, what was implemented already, what what needs another look? So basically, this 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 is all we need right now. The, cool. The and then and then last time it was Richard whose job was to put it into a human friendly text, and then 
once that's written, then we look at the edge cases that aren't covered by the design process, and then we make rulings, then that goes to the rule editors and back and forth, and then everybody looks at it. And, and so- Yeah, again. because it, it's two games and we have a chronicle uh, expansion, expansion for the game. And, and uh, right. yeah, I was looking for the right name because that we changed that quite a lot, how uh, we call it. Uh, and the solo version and the, these all need to work together and right. once, and even though what victor said is true but in the end because of kickstarters we had to have previous i mean not final versions of the rule book so it, it kind of made the process a bit uh harder because then mm -hmm. we had to use those basics i mean sometimes we just said okay just grab this and start over uh and, and eventually, especially because we had the Chronicle added, been, being added to the game and then the solo, and, and these all had their own effects on the rules themselves and how they are described. Okay. So it was a very, very long process until oh, all, wow. the and all the rule books were written down in a proper way. And then we had to translate them into different languages, which then oh, wow. complicated stuff <laughs> yet again. <laughs> So, yeah I, yeah, I was going to say, I, I must say, I also love and appreciate the instructions for how to pack up the box. <laughs> that is like so helpful. <laughs> it's just like so well organized. It seems like such a minor thing, but when you have all those components and everything, just like knowing how to layer it back in the box, I felt the same way with the, uh, the Anachrony big box too. <laughs> Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> so what were what would you say were some of the biggest or the biggest challenge that you faced when you were designing uh, Perseverance Castaway Chronicles, either episode one, episode two, or any of them? <laughs> mm, well, ba basically to, to persevere, right? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a multi-year project. So obviously and, there, and, are, and... there are ups and downs and... Uh, it's it's a huge commitment, and uh, I'm I'm really really thankful for the entire team that we are still in this together, which is awesome. Cool. But but yeah, it's definitely a daunting task sometimes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and, and, I, and sorry. Okay. Ahead, I think for me for me the the, the the biggest challenge is to to juggle with the time and my job and my other job and then this all in between because it's like it used to be once in a while, but uh, in the early years. But now it's like uh, every uh, every week, or we try to do more or less one day a week, and it's it's pretty hard to to make it work with the family and with everything. But it, mm -hmm. it's it's okay. I think that's the most challenging thing because actually I want to work on it every day if it yeah. if it was possible. But so it's not a chore, but it's just like hard to make it work sometimes. Right, right, David. Uh, for me, I, I feel that that uh, we because of some things that we've done well and succeeded at them, we've set the benchmark of uh, of uh, perfection on what we call good enough in mechanically interesting. I want to go there, but I want to go to the other place on every choice. Uh, thematic integration. What, do, what am I doing when I go there? And at least some resemblance of mechanical elegance, as in not have a 10 step resolution at every little sub action, that every now and then there comes the point of like, how the hell am I going to get this any better? It's like, <laughs> I understand that this could be better, but how? How? And then, and, hmm. then, and then it's two weeks of banging my head against the table and then after that when one any one of us comes up with a bad idea that inspires a good idea then it's like <laughs> oh why didn't you do this earlier it's like <laughs> and, 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 and sacred cows getting massacred left and right and and the game just keeps getting better because of it cool. and, you know, uh, so another thing that was also slightly challenging at first is because I, we used to make some games before i used to make one with uh, my cousin and it was the first time I worked with uh, Mind Clash. And so at first you thought you're ready. And then they like say, no, 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 it's great. But we change this, 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 and that. 
I said, oh no, no, we don't. Yes, yes, you do. And then at, at first I had to learn to cope with this mm. uh, way of working. But no, I actually, uh, like the first two times, it's like, oh, what's happening? Why would we change everything? But but now I learned that they always say it with a really good reason. And it always mm -hmm. gets better. Because I have like, I'm like 100% confident that whenever Richard or David or uh, uh, Victor asks to change stuff, it's because it can be better. So mm. at first it was challenging and now it's no challenge anymore because I just know that they're right. But it, yep, they, trust your team. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Richard? Um, no, sorry. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, the unique word and how, how challenging it was to, to mm. make the visual word of, of this game. Uh, apart from the design challenge, challenges, what uh, we've been talking about, and al also this perseverance of, of the team involved, uh, it was it was also a challenge to uh, inspire artists to to stick with the project. And uh, wow. we we had quite a few artists working on on the project before we eventually ended up working on the final artwork. So uh, we we. We had a team of concept artists working together and, and building the basis of this world. And, and we had a lot of uh, trials and errors. So it was, mm. there is a, I, I don't, we don't have, I, I haven't worked at least, and definitely not in my flesh yet, on, on a project that has so many background arts and mm. so many bad background concepts. And because it was needed, it was something unique. It wasn't like we take a, like a general fantasy world or something like that and we just take a classic visual style and, and so all that had to be invented and and it was it was also a very long process and we had time because the design process was also taking longer than we first anticipated so eventually we 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 so we we kind of uh, get to a point where, where the art team and the design team was all at the same uh, level, so gotcha. it, it was good. But it was a cool. it was a long process, and it was uh, sometimes it, it felt like we are never going to get there. But yeah. we did, and now the art team is is working on on episode one and two, and and also on the next episodes. They're they're great, and I'm very happy to have them on on the team, and they're they're also persevering with us. So, so so now it really feels like this uh, whole family of perseverance, and we're we're and and of course there are other projects at Mindclash, but we have these uh, artists working on on this this very project, dedicated their time uh, and and efforts to to this one. So yeah, that that's definitely a good uh, thing to have now, and and I'm I'm really proud of of uh, that part too. Very mm. nice. I just just one tiny thing to add as like wearing my publisher hat actually. Uh, <laughs> it, it was a huge challenge for us as a publisher to 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 drive it home with people what this episodic concept really is about. Because uh, you know people have all these all these mental patterns in their heads and and. Uh, uh, they try to relate any new, new things to something that they already know and it's not really relatable because as far as I know this specific kind of, of series of Euro games has never really been done before so during and after the Kickstarter it was it was really hard to to like explain what 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 mm. you really get with with this with this project uh, but I think that that hurdle is is behind us now because now, as I'm, I'm seeing people trying the game and, and get the ratings on BGG and the comments and, and whatnot, I think I, I always knew that this was like a, a slow, slowly maturing game, you know, mm -hmm. if you know, mm -hmm. know what I mean. It, sure. it, takes it takes time for people to, to actually get it off their shelves and try. And once they do, they hopefully see the beauty if, if, if they are like a bit more experienced gamers. And it seems like it's it's happening now. So I, I'm hoping that with the remaining episodes, it's just gonna be a bit easier to to make them understand what they can expect. Okay. Yeah, cool. we we, we kind of hope to drive home the concept with, with the last two episodes, so that that's yeah. when the whole thing comes together in in, in people's heads, and and then it re it's really like that 
you have a movie and you are only saw the first half of it just yet. So and you, you want to see the, what's going to happen after that. And and when you when you saw the final uh, conclusion, then the whole thing just makes sense and it, it feels different than just seeing the first twenty minutes of it. And yeah, that's really that's really awesome. Uh, so what would you say was your biggest as a, I mean, it could be individual, uh, your biggest like aha moment. Um, it seems like there were many of them, <laughs> but is there one that is like, we've already mentioned a few. <laughs> uh, well, what, one, one I remember is the one uh, next to the lake where we were like, where we were three days and like day one was great. Day two was no, this is never going to happen because mm -hmm. everything falls apart. And then day three, we only had like a few hours left before because we had to fly all over the place uh, back home. Um, <clears throat> and then we just were in the two groups. And then, then the first, it was the first time when, when episode one clicked together. Like when, when we, we sat in two groups, we tried each other's, pro, uh, each other's uh, prototype, which we built in a few, uh, uh, few hours. And then suddenly it was like, okay, that's the basis of uh, episode one. It was like, like where the dinosaurs uh, appear at the walls. I think for, for me, that was like a, a great moment because like the day before uh, we were more, more like depressed and then, then it was okay. Now we can go home, we can move on. So for awesome. me, that's what I really remember. Awesome. Well, it's it's more more like Richard's brainchild, but to me, uh, the, the big aha moment was when when the, the solo opponents got a theme. Uh, mm. We we already knew what we wanted to do with them mechanically, but but thematically it was uh, a bit uh, tougher. But but Richard came up with this idea that okay, here here we are uh, on on, an, on a, like a deserted island. We are trying to gain some sort of following, some sort of political influence, and we are building up a society. And and they are like these officers who are commanding us, and we are trying to be someone. But not everyone is going to be on board with it, right? So uh, right. The, the, there came the idea of, of the solo opponent to be the dissenters, the people who are actually someone already in the society with a following and with, with, with ideas on their own. And they just don't want to follow along. And they just don't want, don't want us to succeed because they have their own, own agenda. Mm -hmm. And it totally and I, fit because the solo player mechanically is only playing semi-constructively. Like there is a bunch of mechanisms in the solo game where the bot, where you have to go and rescue the bot so that the bot doesn't trip the city's defenses. And which makes totally perfectly sense that the, the you know, the, the <laughs> grumpy little uh, angry NPC goes and presses the buttons that you didn't want them to. So I, 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 like initially I was like, why are we obsessing about this? And then it dropped for me as well as they explained it. I was like, oh my God, this works. So yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so it, it seems like, um, you know, a, as you as you were saying, Richard, the the art process was kind of just as massive and challenging as actually designing the game. Um, but in the end, can you talk about like a little bit how the art and graphic design decisions were made in Perseverance? Sure. So that was mainly my, my responsibility, but uh, Ville or, or uh, our director at, at Mind Clash, uh, back at the time, I, I really wanted her by my side because she has such a good eye for, uh, she's an artist herself, herself. I, I'm not an artist myself. I just, I just know how, how to work with artists. So that's, that's uh, why she has a very good eye, for, for example, how to how to create the color palettes for, for a certain artwork or, or the whole, whole or for an episode, for instance. Um, also, she has a very good eye for, for small details and, and she's really uh, paying attention to all these uh, small details. So it was very good to have her by my side. And we started to build, as, as I, I mentioned, a concept artist uh, team. And first, they, they, there were three people doing it. Uh, that, that's when we came up with the um, uh, episodic concept. Before that, we also had an artist. I, I, I've been working with him 
and we've been working with him for for a lot of time on anachrony and and the tricarion too so he has been with us for for a while but for for perseverance we've been talking about a lot and he's been doing concepts but in the end he didn't really feel what we wanted with this project so mm -hmm. so we didn't want to uh, and we ended up uh, going separate or separate ways and when we realized the episodic concept needs more than just one artist that's when we started with this concept art phase basically we we, we had this uh, name for for those couple of months where these uh, artists working together they were actually friends and they had this uh, uh, they, they had different uh, areas of art and um, where, where they, they had their own uh, expertise so they could work together to come up with, with uh, ideas on, on how this game should look like uh, or how the or the, how the different things should look like. I mean, at first, in, and, and the very base of this whole concept visually was the ship because that, that, that's what we tear apart and that's what we start to build uh, or build or buildings from. So, so that's, that's what had to be designed first. And then when we, we had the ship design, then we could start working on how the, how the different buildings could look like in, in the different episodes. So that's why I said it's, 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 it was a challenge for us because it kind of felt like doing concepts for a movie or for a really big budget project, which was something I once got from the artist that I, I or, or a video game, for instance, because that's what they said, that we're trying to do an AAA video game with just mm. a few people. And I said, <laughs> okay, yeah, you might be right. That's true, but <laughs> that's, that's, just, that's just how we are. So um, yeah, and eventually uh, none of these uh, artists th stick with the project. At, at one point, they all had other stuff to do. Some went to do concepts for movies, and and luckily, we we found the artists uh, who, who 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 did most of the job for episode one and two, and who are who are already uh, working on on uh, episode three. Uh, and that's that was a different phase because we already had some something in our hands. And those something sometimes was just one image. And in that one image, we captured, we tried to capture everything possible, like how the color palette I mentioned, how, how different plants would look like in, on an island like this, how a dinosaur would look like, how, how people around those dinosaurs would look like. Right. And I try not to say anything, I shouldn't. Uh, so, so it was, really like a long process and and what and once we had i mean we had to design the different parts of the island and of course mm -hmm. in ep in episode two you haven't seen most of the island yet so I, I i don't think i say too much when i say that the island is bigger and there are different zones of the islands and in the different zones there are different dinosaurs and different plants and different flora and fauna and, and we had to come up with all this and it was very inspiring so not just it, it wasn't in, in a way it was tough but of course it was something that kept us going because we wanted to explore this island just just like people will like would like to explore it uh, when, when they get the, the box in their hands um so i don't know if i answered your question yeah Prob okay <laughs> Uh, I could keep absolutely. going for hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. I, I think it's really cool and really fascinating that you also touched on the color palettes because that is something, it's a very, you know, there's a lot going on with episodes one and episodes two, but it is very gorgeous. And, you know, you can tell that there was a lot of love, detail, and like thought that went into the artwork, but it almost is like sometimes, uh, you don't even notice it that much because it's so it's so fitting, you know. Um, so yeah. I I I can tell that there was just a, a a lot to that, but also it's not getting in the way of the game, you know. It's actually like making the game amplifying, you know, the experience, which is really cool. So 
you know, yeah, that whole saying. process. Yeah, that whole process is it was worth it. <laughs> cool. So so how um how and when did did you guys come up with the name Perseverance Castaway Chronicles? Well, it was also a long process. Um, and and uh, also because of the episodic concept, we had to come up with different names for the different episodes, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, or in this case, when we, we, we know that, when we knew that the first two episodes are going to be one product, of course, then, then we had to name that. Uh, so there were different names for the different versions, single episodes or just the two episodes and all, all that stuff. But let's just talk about the perseverance part. Uh, so we, we used to, and up, up uh, still, uh, I think all my Clash games have just one single word na- names. Yeah, right. Okay. So it, it has to be the case before and, and it still is. So that was one thing we, we wanted gotcha. to have. And then what I tried to do is to come up with a name that could be a ship's name. And there was this uh, video game, Tomb Raider, uh, that the new mm-hmm. installation where they had this ship called Endurance, which I, don't, I think they, they used it in other adventure genre movies too. But uh, and that was very close to what I had in mind because I wanted the ship's name to express what you have to do in the game and what the people in, in the game's world would have to do. And that's where we ended up with Perseverance, uh, which of course couldn't be the ship's cool. name because that's more like a cargo ship's name. So <laughs> we, we were looking for a more prestigious name uh, because it was a lux- luxury ocean liner, and that's how we ended up with the Pearl of the Seas, where we already had this concept to somehow <laughs> eventually get to perseverance. And that, that's where this Pearl of the Seas v- VIP entrance ID came up, where the captain sees that, that, that sign in the sand, and, and some of the uh, letters are covered or... or you don't see them and he just reads perseverance and that's how he names the city in the end so it did it, did, it, did, it didn't happen to be the ship's name but it ended up being the city's name because the, the people uh, the new uh, societies people had to persevere to to mm. stay alive and, and and just keep keep going and in the end make a safe heaven on the island where they're safe from the dinosaurs and, and they can they can grow and evolve into something because at one point they realize they're not going home that's really cool and i i don't even think i realized that all of your titles are one word until you just mentioned yeah. it <laughs> but that that's cool too so when did you when did you guys know that it was finished and like when i say finished i guess i mean ready for you to like launch on kickstarter 2024 Um, (laughs) (laughs) good answer (laughs) good answer (laughs) but yeah when when did it like when did it hit a point where you're, you're like all right we're gonna put this on kickstarter or episodes one and two at least um well i think it's it's not a secret that we tend to put up our games on Kickstarter a little bit earlier than other publishers in a way that it's not like most most people put most other publishers put it up when it's like eight to hundred percent ready. We are more between seventy or eighty, and that's mm. that's on purpose actually. It's 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 a feature, not a bug. It's uh, <laughs> it's 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 to gather feedback and and see the reactions and and still being able to incorporate cool ideas that might emerge during the campaign because they do tend to emerge. So that, that was the, the case with Perseverance as well. Mm, cool. Actually, in, in this particular case, not much, not that much has changed uh, since the Kickstarter. We did, we did do quite a bit of development afterwards, but like the core remained the same. The big challenge here was the was the four booklets that we had for the game. That that took mm. a, an insane amount of time because mm. uh, it's not just four booklets. It has to have the ver- the exact same terminology and the exact same uh, structure 
and the exact same capitalization across both booklets because it uses the same terms. So there was little room to error and we, we had to dedicate a lot of time to it. Gotcha. And even though we did like 100% perfect, but I think uh, the, the reception of those rule books overall is I think pretty good and they do a, a really good job at teaching the game. Absolutely, I agree. So I guess, and you know, we could do a little round table or whoever has thoughts on it, but do you have any advice for someone who's interested in designing a deep, heavy, thematic game? Put your life on a stop and do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not true. No. <laughs> No, but, but you, you're just... That may be an advice for yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, but what I mean is, if, if you do this, you will have to commit because it's a, it's a big commitment, but you get a lot of it in return. Not, well, not only the journey, the final product, of course, but the journey is also great. Uh, but pu putting on my my design theorist hat a bit, you know, I like talking about that to to try and answer your question in some useful way besides cool stories. The the my takeaway that that I try to learn from it as a designer is that, you know, people say, oh, there are thematic games and there are euro games, you know, and and even amongst euro games, there are the beige cube pushers and there there are slightly more interesting settings games, right? And and then you talk to Euro game designers who go like, oh, I take the theme very seriously. And then what they mean is that the nouns of the game, the how, the the what are the objects of the game and what are we building make sense from the setting and from the flow of the game. Is the who am I, why am I doing it makes sense. But when we do a true narrative design in a Euro strategy game, not in a storytelling cards telling you mm -hmm. something, books, whatever, but in an actual strategy game where you do actions and that wants to tell a story, then, then there are two more ingredients besides the setting and the settings nouns making sense. First, the verbs in world and the verbs in the game have mm -hmm. to match. So it's when you build an outpost, you take an outpost and you put it where it's built. When you send out an adventure party, you take a party of soldiers and you put it on an adventure. It's like the, the, the flow of the game has to be the same of the flow of the story you're telling, which is a step beyond thematically making sense. It narratively tells this is why it feels like remember when we mounted the defense of the city because that's literally what you're doing you go there to collect the soldiers and then you go there to mount the right. defense up there and that's that's what makes it feel like the story and and there was another point i wanted to say but my sentence got too long so i forgot uh, <laughs> deep yeah, yeah so i understand it's, it's, it's one step further in the how many levels does it have to make sense on and and that's real hard to learn that you can't shorthand things with you know uh, mastery tracks and uh, and uh, um, unhappiness cubes and you have to put it in the world whatever you're doing and that's what differentiates a heavy euro from a narrative heavy euro is that is this bit and and what, whatever little I knew about it before Perseverance, I learned from Victor and Richard, uh, watching them do it on, on Precarian and watching them redo it on my anachrony. But, but after Perseverance, I'm, I'm shouting it from the rooftop that, that, this, that it is not impossible to tell a story while in a Euro game with zero in-universe text in the game. So... Sure, it doesn't have to be as awesome. heavy as as this sometimes gets, but it's 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 certainly a craft to learn and practice. And I would advise yeah. anyone to I, I would advise anyone against to trying this on 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 their you know their first or second game because this this takes a lot of practice and 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 you know we've all been saying how humbling this whole experience has been to mm -hmm. persevere through this. Yeah, and it's very important that you said this. I mean, most Euro games have a setting. They have 
sometimes usually not for music, but they have a world and they have a setting. Okay, this is what's going on. Go play. And it has some kind of story, of course, if, if you want to put it that way, but especially perseverance, have this, it's a different level of narrative, uh, which is not something people are used to in Euro games. So that would definitely kind of like our mission statement for this project that to make a narrative Euro game, basically. Mm -hmm. like. mm. The one thing that the one I advice I would add to this is uh, is to be open to is to not be married to, to to ideas and be open to to letting things go, because uh, I I think I I've personally as a designer fallen into this trap many times and I know the others did as well that you just want to bring all the cool ideas into the game, but at, at, after a point it's not gonna be, make the game better it's just gonna make it worse and uh, I think. Uh, now in, in 2022, it's just getting more and more important for games to be more accessible and, and easier to pick up and easier to set up and easier to grasp in, in their essence. And I think- And it sounds funny from poor Rulebook's Minecraft yes, team, but yes, we yes. do care about this very much. Yes, so. yeah, yes. And I, I know that Perseverance episode one and two is not the prime example for this, but but we we did we did actually learn a lot from from the feedbacks and 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 from the process, and we know how important this is. Uh, so so yeah, we we definitely killed a lot of our our own darling ideas during the process, and we'll sure. we'll continue to do so. But but yeah, what, what what matters at the end is is to have a very like coherent experience that flows well and. Uh, and, and it's easy to get people into. Very cool. Well, Richard, Victor, Thomas, David, it has been really, really awesome talking to you guys and you know, hearing the backstory for Castaway. I'm sorry, hearing the backstory for Perseverance Castaway Chronicles. There we go. <laughs> um, but is there anything um, else you'd like to mention about uh, perhaps what's coming down the pike with episodes three and four or anything else that uh, the Mind Clash team is working on? Mm, well, uh, what, I, what I can say is yes, episodes three and four are coming and uh, there will be more specifics about the when and, and the how before the end of the year. So stay, stay tuned for that. Cool. Well, thank you guys again so much for being here. Um, I really enjoyed talking to you and uh, I'm looking forward to episodes three and four. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all for watching Cardboard Creations. Hopefully it's been as inspiring and fascinating for you as it has been for me. And remember, the only way to get something done is to start doing it. Thank you.